What's up, everybody, and welcome to another Seven Figure Photographer Live. <clears throat> As you can tell, my voice is still not quite here, and I think it might have actually just gotten worse right as I said that. So uh, excited to be here today. It has been like almost two months, I think. Uh, so just to kind of give you guys a little bit of background on uh, what's happened. We went on vacation to Pennsylvania to um, do some stuff for my father-in-law and just to hang out and see him. And we got back and I got sick and I've literally been sick, uh, for three weeks. Um, I've had not strep throat, but a sore throat. I had double ear infection, double pink eye again. I don't know how I do that, but, uh, it's been fun. I can't hear out of both my ears. I'm starting to hear a little bit, uh, the last two days. So it's been an interesting go, but, um, Today I wanted to get here in the office and sit down because I'm feeling good about everything else, just my voice <clears throat> and my ears. So uh, I, th I thought, you know what, let's come up with a topic for today. Let's sit down and talk about it and just have some fun because some of the things that I've been seeing, working on, playing with, um, and kind of honestly just getting freaked out by is the whole AI concept in our industry. And so um, today, that's what our topic is about, the AI impact and how technology is transforming the photography industry. And I'm excited to talk to you about it. But before we do that, let's jump in and do a quick intro and go from there. What's up, guys? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sam Marvin, and I have been in the photography industry for 25 plus years. While I love being a creative, business is my passion and elevating the industry of photography is my focus. I created The Seven Figure Photographer to share my journey to seven figures and help others find their way to Wow, honestly I'm amazed that I was even able to do that because I have like I was struggling just to get everything set up this morning. So uh, for those of you who have been in my office and seen all this or just seen pictures, it's kind of crazy. Um, but welcome, Idaho Outdoor Dad. For those of you who are watching and hanging out with us, please make sure to jump on, comment. If you are joining via the uh, the link um, in your, like from the text message that was sent out or anything like that, make sure to open the app and go in and sign in so that you can comment, say hi to us. Um, Idaho Outdoor Dad, I'm not 100% sure who that is. So tell us, obviously you're from Idaho, so welcome. Uh, tell us where you're watching from uh, or even who you're, what your real name is so that we know who's hanging out with us today. And, oh, Nick Porter. Welcome, Nick Porter. And glad to have you here today. So uh, like I said, this is kind of an interesting topic. And it's almost like I'm not, I'm not a big one in cons conspiracy theory stuff. Um, and I stress, like I worry a little bit uh, that somebody might think that that's the direction this is going, but I'm not sure. Um, Idaho or dad says, yeah, I have a fishing YouTube, just happened to be on that account. That's awesome. I'm glad to, to hear that. So uh, I love fishing. And as you probably know, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, um, we ought to talk a little bit more. You should send me a message, Idaho Outdoor Dad and or Nick. Um, actually, yeah, I do. I do know a little bit more of that. Um, shoot, I am on discord and it's going to be making noises. Okay. So let's talk about AI and the impact it's going to have on our photography industry. It's kind of crazy. Now, when you really think about it, AI is not like, I think it's just, it's got more of a name to it or behind it now than it used to. When you really put it into consideration and you really think about things, we've had AI, artificial intelligence. When you honestly look in your cam camera, you look through the camera and the light meter kind of adjusts for you, that's really technically artificial intelligence, right? Okay, well, it's gotten crazier. And in the last six months, eight months, it has gone off the charts crazy. And some of the stuff that you can do is just absolutely bizarre. Now. For me, one of the things I love is automation, and that's where it kind of crosses the paths really bad. But we can't ignore the fact that it is showing up more and more in our industry today than, 
I mean, it's showing up in every industry. The, some of the statistics are just absolutely stifling on the things that are happening. The jobs that are being reduced or changed uh, based on AI. Um, and again, I think that it's like, you can't necessarily call, like say that it's new, because when you really look at things like, for instance, the ability, it's it really should just be called um, the absence of personality. I don't know, something like that. Because like you go to Walmart, we went to Walmart yesterday, which I haven't been to Walmart in a long time. I'm not a fan of going to Walmart, but um, literally like almost everything in their store has been changed over to, um, to the person, like you self check. And it's like, they've, you know, there's, so there's no more personal experience. Uh, everywhere you go in the store, it's like the only people they have in there are the people watching to make sure you're not stealing stuff. Um, which is kind of bizarre all in itself. It's like, and if you haven't seen or noticed uh, something that we've noticed a lot is the customer service in everywhere in the world right now is like absolutely, what would be the word abhorrent? Ab um, it's disgusting. Like the, the customer service that you get out in the world is absolutely just horrendous. And so, of course, there are still some of those that have great customer service. And I think you're going to find some of those people that are going to uh, stand out amongst the, the rest. But uh, when you really take into consideration uh, artificial intelligence or AI, um, you're going to see some of that stuff uh, disappear. But at the same time, it's getting so incredibly adept that it's really doing a decent job of kind of learning some of those things. And I think that was some of the concern for a long time. Well, you can't teach a machine to learn emotion. You can't teach um, any of those things. And so uh, it's just kind of one of those things that has really been proven differently. Now, uh, where is it all coming from? You know, I think that it's really interesting because some of the challenge that I don't, I'm sure there's many of you who have recognized this. Uh, data farming. Now, really, when you look at the social media uh, powerhouses in the world, TikTok, uh, Facebook, um, Instagram, which are, you know, combined with Thread now, uh, Twitter, all these things, all of those have, are really exist more. Their power, their money is in obviously the advertising, but their advertising, the money in the advertising comes from their data. Uh, how people react to certain things, how people uh, respond to certain things, and how can we elicit specific responses due to certain things. Uh, you've all seen uh, seen a lot, and, and uh, Nick, I'm seeing your comments, but I'm going to read them here in a second. Otherwise, it'll get me thrown way off. Um, but all that information that they have been collecting for years and years in social media, seeing trends for how people react to things is what creates the basis for this learning or machine learning or AI. Now, um, like I said, it's been happening for years and years. Everything, you look at, um, you know, 2016, I, I have a 2016 um, GMC Denali. And one of the things, you know, an, an intelligence on that machine, you know, we went from vehicles that used to have, uh, I think it was like no computers to two to three computers to now, like, I think somebody told me my car had over 150 different computer modules on it. One of the things that was absolutely mind boggling for me when I got my car was, um, you know, well, there's a couple of different things, the, the lane assist. Uh, I, of course, played with that forever. I'd love to, you know, turn the lane assist on and it would really just follow the line of the road. You take the line out, boom, it's gone. Um, one of my favorites that just absolutely baffled me was the high beam assist, I'll call it. I don't know what to call it, uh, where I could actually turn my high beams on and anytime a car or a reflection was bright enough in return, it would lower my high beams down to low beams, right? 
Um, because I do that. I drive down the road. I totally forget I have my high beams on and I'm just blind and everybody, people are cussing me, turn like brighten me, all that stuff. But all those things are all, um, artificial intelligence or computer learning. It's really just trying to, um, you know, make our jobs or our lives a little bit easier. Some would actually argue that it's just plain, um, oops, just plain, um, making us lazier, if you will. Um, and I think, you know, honestly, you look at our, our world and like how many of our kids are sitting inside, um, you know, playing on video games, doing less, uh, and they really kind of are set up for that perfect storm of people that no longer really communicate. And it's really interesting because <clears throat> I've seen trends in social media where <clears throat> I was talking about this with a customer the other day, where kids used to want, every kid in the world wanted to be an influencer. They wanted to be um, popular on social media. Now that has since almost flip-flopped. And most people, I guess, I can't really say most people, but many people I've seen, they've taken all their stuff off of social media. They have one or two things on there and they don't want to necessarily, they kind of want to stay hidden. They don't want to be open to the judgment of the public or uh, to their peers. They just want people to see what they want them to see. Whereas it used to be, they want people to see everything about them. And it's bizarre to see how those trends change and how those things happen. Now, some of the things, okay, I'm gonna read through some of these comments because uh, Nick says, uh, AI becoming more of an influence in all industries is really like an all revelations that the world has gone through in the past. The depersonalization caused by AI is what is making it, su making it such an evident. Yeah, and that is that is very true. And, it, and I think it's really interesting. Um, it almost feels like there's so much change that has happened so rapidly re recently that um, there's going to be changes forced because of that rapid change. They're trying to create new, um, new laws, if you will, uh, governing some of these things because they are so new. It's just like the whole cryptocurrency, uh, digital currency thing, uh, how that's changed. AI, the same thing. Um, they're changing things. So what does it do to our industry? Well, I think that it kind of opens up some really unique opportunity because I think you're going to find we're going to go through that trend again where people come to this point of, I don't have enough personal attention and that's what they want. So now maybe that will become a thing of the past. Maybe it will become something old. And maybe those of us who do have good uh, customer service capability will struggle because it's not needed, not wanted. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, Nick also says, which is why it is such a big deal. No one noticed with our shop uh, floors got more automated. No one noticed with our shop floors got more automated because there wasn't a person that you interacted with, but with AI coming into creative spaces, you're removing the person. Yeah. Uh, so just like all other improvements you need to adapt or die. It's just how you choose to adapt. And that's exactly, that's part of, part of where I'm going, Nick. So hold on to that one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go on. We're going to talk about a little, a couple of different things. Some of the things, some of the benefits that I think, and I'm kind of getting out of, out of, uh, out of my order here, but I'm going to talk about some of the benefits of AI because some of the things out there are really incredible and it really does give us an opportunity to make a business that does allow us a little bit more leeway or power being a one man band or an opportunity or a, a business of one. It allows us to automate so many of those things. For instance, editing. I know um, Clint brought this to my attention. Uh, one of my friends, Clint, who's in Missouri, uh, Mississippi, of course, I'm gonna get that wrong and he's gonna beat me up. Um, and, you know, he was talking about uh, somebody, uh, David Beckham, who is a photographer uh, out in, I'm not even going to try, because I think he's in Iowa, I want to say. Uh, he's an incredible photographer. He's been talking about um, AI editing. And there's so much 
there's so much to it. I, I played around with some of it just the other day uh, because I was like, you know, that's just, you're losing too much of that personal touch. Now, this is what's funny, and this is exactly what Nick's talking about. If you don't adapt, you die. Uh, because that's one of the things that was ringing in my head. I was thinking, oh, like, you know, I don't want to lose that personal touch. Okay, well, let's rewind. Let's go back to cameras in the film days. And when digital cameras came forward, a lot of the old photographers were like, eh, no, I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to stay true to my roots. I'm going to keep it pure. I'm going to do, well, guess what? A lot of those guys got left behind and the people adapting to digital came in. And one of the things that digital did was it did make it less expensive for photographers. It did make photographers advance so much faster because you could take a picture, you could see it right on the back of your camera and you could adjust immediately without costing a lot of extra money by burning through real rolls of film. So um, editing, AI editing is one of those things. It's like, uh, do you allow it to creep into your business? Well, I think that it's really kind of a cool thing. And some of the things that I see the potential here are being able to have, uh, you know, one click editing options. So maybe you do an edit to a basic style and then you have uh, allow your clients an opportunity to choose the different styles of edit. So something that uh, you can check out. Um, I want to th think of the name of the editor that I tested out, Evoto, I think is what it was called. So check it out if you get a chance. Uh, I'm going to talk about some other stuff that's really cool. Uh, AI for our clients. Now this is kind of one of the, this could be a positive, it could be a negative. Uh, I think it's it's originally or right off the bat, it's being felt as a negative. We've seen people already posting on Facebook, check out my new AI headshot where people are just taking a snapshot with their phone, they're turning it in and uh, AI is creating all these different headshot uh, options. Now, um, as photographers, we see through it, we look at it, we're critiquing it, we're like, oh my gosh, this is terrible, it looks like this. But guess what, guys? Like our customers, don't pay attention to a lot of that detail like we do. And it makes okay, like it makes a great uh, starting point for a lot of people. So how can we adapt that into our business or allow it to be a part of our business so that we don't get left behind, kind of like Nick is talking about here. So there's, <clears throat> I think, a lot of things. And one thing that you could do that would really be beneficial for your business is to find the things in your business. And I've talked about this a hundred thousand times, find the things you hate, find the things that you aren't great at and list them down, make a list of all the things that you're not great at in your business or that you don't like. For instance, I hate, in fact, I don't even do it. I don't do uh, newsletters, but that is something that you can really have done through AI. Um, maybe you're not great at, uh, posting social media and maybe the only reason is because the content is hard to come up with and AI is really capable of helping with those things. So some of those things are really powerful and it gives you an oppor opportunity to just be the face of your company, to be the human that people get to experience because, it just makes it that much easier. Now, where you're going to be struggling with is it's so readily available that everybody's going to be out there at the top of their game. And this is where it becomes really kind of a scary thing because now for those of you who are like me, who suck at copy, um, suck at writing some of these things, have an ability to really easily write great copy. But now it's going to raise the bar. Now, people are going to be sifting through nothing but incredible quality to find what they want. Um, yeah, ChatGPT can write your whole website. It can do a lot of amazing things. I have been playing around with dashboards in uh, Sheets, Google Sheets, and building out a new dashboard that has just the data that I want. And I have used ChatGPT to write a lot of the formulas for that that I've Googled for years and tried to figure things out, tried to figure out how to write them myself. And I'm not kidding you. I literally go to ChatGPT and I type it in, how do I do this? 
and it writes the formula for me. And I just throw it in there. And so it saves me a lot of time. Now, for me, time is one of those things that right now is more valuable than anything. And it's really what I'm, uh, what I'm trying to gain more of in my life and in my business is have more time so that I can spend more time with my family or spend more time out on my boat fishing. And that's like, those are, those are the things. Now, what are some of the bad things um, or some of the negatives that are happening? Again, these are all things that I think um, we hear like in church and stuff, like maybe it's not even all church, but maybe it's just from our parents, maybe it's whatever. Um, anything, too much of anything can be a bad thing, but the right amount of some things can be great. Uh, one of those things is uh, just the things that you can do uh, that could be really used as a negative um, or as a potential uh, threat to us in our society. Uh, one of which is the ability to clone your voice and write scripts that literally hear or sound just like your voice. What's up, Tim? Welcome. I can start now. I appreciate it. Um, so 11, uh, 11 labs, you can take a one minute clip. Uh, I hate to even bring this up, but you could take, take, use this voice cause it sucks. Um, you could take a one minute clip of me talking and upload it into 11 labs and it will clone your voice. Okay. Now let's take it even further. Uh, mid journey, you can go in and create an avatar. Now, this is something that's already been birthed in our world and already a big part of our world is memojis, bitmojis in um, Snapchat. On Facebook, we have our, our, uh, our avatars. So you can actually go in, take a picture, upload it to MidJourney, and create an avatar that looks just like your picture. You can make it more photorealistic. You can make it more cartoonish. You can do all these different things with it. And then you can take your voice into 11 labs and you can clone your voice and then you can take the avatar and your cloned voice into uh, a website called did.com I think is what it's called and you can actually make your avatar talk in your voice it's incredible uh, one thing that I watched this weekend that was absolutely mind-boggling was appointment setters uh, customers or sorry customers um, businesses that do a lot of appointments or want somebody to answer their phone for them. And AI could do the whole thing. So again, this is one of those things. It could be a positive, could be a negative. Uh, there's a lot of scams out there where people are calling you using your kid's voice and demanding money when your kid's sitting upstairs. So there's some of the negative things. Um, you know, what could be done? What are things that people could uh, use your picture your your video see the movements of your mouth change that ai to show you saying something you never said and really have a, a just an incredibly negative impact on your business um one thing that i forgot to announce is or one for, thing i forgot to say and and something that i'm really interested to see is you know um what what is ai going to uh or what what are cameras going to have when it comes to AI, what are the settings you're gonna be able to set on your camera that has AI capabilities built into your camera? Like that I'm intrigued to see. Are we gonna be able to edit pictures on the fly in the back of our cameras just based on a profile that we've created for how we edit? Because we've already talked about systemizing editing by creating a recipe or recording a recipe so that other people could technically do your editing for you so that you can hire an outsource editor because I think that's one of the powerful things. Anyway, that was a, another tangent. Um, so a couple of the, or one of the statistics, it's expected that 55,000 jobs just in like call centers and are, are going to be lost in the next couple of years due to AI. People, the, the voices um, or people answering phones with AI, people making calls, with AI, the video I was telling you about that I watched the other day was absolutely incredible. And <clears throat> the emotion was there, inflection was there. All those things were there in this phone call. You could kind of tell, w guys, we're not, like when you consider how much time has been put into 
uh, the AI aspect of these things, it hasn't been that much. AI has been there for a long time, but people deciding, oh, I'm going to try to see if I can get AI to clone a voice and answer a phone call for me. That's, that's newer. And in six months, it's already, or eight months, it's already so incredibly powerful, so incredibly like capable that at what point do we start to not be able to tell that we're talking to a human being on the other side or on the other end? Now, I mean, realistically, we already do it. We already call the bank and say um, customer service or uh, I want to talk about my, uh, my balance or I want to transfer a balance. I call the power company and I can pay my, like I can say pay my bill. It already listens to those things, but now it's just gotten so much more advanced. Um, so, you know, I, I can't honestly say, I don't, I don't have a clue, but seeing what's happened in the last eight months in the photography industry and the capabilities of being able to create photos, realistic looking photos with AI, uh, the ability to edit photos with AI, the growth and, and the power is going to be incredible. And so I think that exactly what Nick said earlier, this is one of those things where you cannot just sit back and wait to see what happens because you will get left behind. And I think that as scary as it is, um, I think that there's a lot of negative, a lot of scary stuff that is coming. I, I watched a, a video um, last week about one of the uh, a couple of the top people in the AI world um, and the things that are happening and the things that they're scared of. Uh, one of the top executives from Google in the AI department that's been working on their uh, AI learning stuff for the last 10 years up and left because he's freaked out about where it's going. So there's some things that are really scary about what's, um, what's going on. But yes, you are correct there, Nick. The internet was scary in 1998. Um, and uh, it is crazy to think that we're older than Google. Uh, but there are a lot of things that changed. And, you know, I hear us saying this, and my, my son was so, so right the other day. Um, you know, we say it, we heard our, our grandparents say it, back in my day, back in my day, or when I was young, we didn't have this. Or when I was, well, guess what? Um, my son said the other day, he says, yeah, well, back in your day, you didn't have this either. And, you know, people in your day said the same thing that you're saying now. And we're going to say it to our kids. It's incredible to think, you know, the fact that we can pay all of our bills right here on this one device. Um, back in the day, I used to hate it. My, we lived up on top of this hill and um, it was a big driveway that was really steep and it was a miserable hill to walk up uh, so much that most of the time I'd either ride a four-wheeler to the bottom or whatever. Uh, my mom would put stamps on all of her bills. This is before 1998, Nick. And uh, she'd put stamps on all of her bills and she'd write checks out. She'd put them in the envelopes and she'd say, hey, take this down to the mailbox. And I, I used to hate it. I dreaded it. But even worse... When I was waiting for a package to come, this is actually really comical too. I was waiting for packages to come every single day. I'd walk down to the bottom of the, of the driveway, check the mailbox, nobody was there. Back in the day, I wanted to create this little thing to where a little sensor, when you open the mailbox, it would turn on a light upstairs. So I knew when the, mail, the postman had been there. So I didn't walk down to the bottom and check the mail before the post postal service got there and look where we are now like we get a notification on our phone the minute something's delivered um i get notifications when amazon delivers stuff in my garage because they open my garage door put it in there and tell me that it's there so <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah don't get too much anxiety about all the notifications on my screen i do have way too much uh, the red dots are, no, and it has nothing to do with that, Tim. 
the I have red dots on stuff like this one is my family chat. And if you knew how fast they like went through messages, I have to answer those once a day or read them once a day. I can't do that. That was 88 of the 155 just right there. Let's see what else is, is in there. None, none of them are my Facebook. The other one are Pinterest notifications. I don't really do much with it. So yeah, there's some notifications on there. But I check my email all the time. I check my, my text messages as fast as I can. You know, on a morning like today, when I'm getting ready for a live, I have 11 text messages because uh, my priority is getting ready for this. So yeah, I know. It gives me anxiety too, but I get it. Um, any questions, like thoughts on all this? You guys have been great. The difference is now back in my day means five years ago when our parents said it, it meant 50 years ago. That is true. Um, it's definitely a, a difference. Like, um, you know, some of the things like, like one of the things that was, was on the news the other day, they were talking about, um, how stretch marks are actually, uh, what would be the word? Um, uh, evolve evolution. Yeah. Like the evolution of <laughs> Tim sends me a message, uh, the evolution of, I don't know if you'd call it evolution, but stretch marks, um, how kids that are playing video games are getting horizontal stretch marks across their back because they're sitting in what I believe they call traction, which is sitting as they're growing through growth spurts. They're sitting so much that they're getting horizontal stretch marks, which means yeah, I don't, maybe, I don't know. I can't remember. But anyway, it was it was something that they said they'd never seen before. And it was happening just because of kids playing video games. And I was like, no. And I went and checked my kids back. And sure enough, he's got them. I was like shocked. And uh, he's like, you're full of crap, dad. Anyway, um, AI is crazy, guys. I think that it's, it's just like everything else in the world. Uh, you're exactly right, Nick. Like the internet in 1998 was terrifying. Um, the fact, I think one of the biggest things that I remember, um, was the fears of like pornography in like at, at the fingertips. Um, and I think it's obviously so much worse than that. Now, um, there's with anything there can be good and there can be bad. And I think that that's really, it depends on our moral compass, um, where we're going to take it, what we're going to do with it. Sadly, there's a lot of people out there that are willing to do bad things and that want to steal from people and that want to take advantage of other people. And that's going to continue to happen. Um, I always, you know, the, a lot of people say, well, you know, since, since social media, there's, there's more, uh, kidnapping, there's more. And I know like, there's a whole nother conversation to get into. Um, but back in the day, like if a kid was kidnapped in, you know, an hour from where I live, that news didn't travel fast and sometimes it never got to us. Now, social media, if something happens, we all get an Amber alert on our phone. I'm not even going to turn it that way because I don't want Tim making fun of my, my, uh, notifications. But anyway, um, we all get an Amber alert knowing that somebody has been taken most of the time or a lot of times. So, um, I think that it's just how fast things travel, but, uh, we all have the opportunity to make it good. Uh, but my biggest point here today, and guys, I've been a, I've, I've been at the bad end of not, um, not evolving with my business. And, um, and I know how bad it can hurt. Uh, but if there's one thing that I can teach you or one thing that I can, can, uh, say is pay attention to the new things that are coming. Learn about them. You don't have to employ them or use them per se, but learn about them. Be aware of them. Um, look at what you can use it for in your business and how it can power the good things in your business. Uh, Tim, you're a one man band. Uh, use the power of AI to, to help you with things. And I know some of those things scare the crap out of you. Um, and, and maybe it's not even that it's just, you know, some people are not computer people find somebody that can help you with it or find somebody that can, can teach you some of those things. 
uh, you know, every program out there is adding automation. It's a huge thing right now. Learn how to automate your processes. Uh, if not automating them, learn how to create systems uh, that make it easier to do that. Um, it's evident there's businesses out there that are very successful um, that have not kept up with the times. I walk into businesses on a regular basis and I see this. Uh, and it's just, it would be interesting like to try to talk to those people and explain to them what's out there right now with automation and in artificial intelligence because you know a lot of them are just so disconnected from the world they do their thing they go home they don't care about growing their business they're just trying to make enough to make life move forward tim says i turned off the amber alert mod notification on my phone because it's way too loud especially when it goes off in the middle of the night that is for sure uh, I'm automating more things now. I have my booking consults all automated now for my website. It's great to wake up to an appointment that is auto added to my calendar. Absolutely. Are you using like Calendly for that? Or, um, you know, lots of great stuff there. It's just learning how to drive the people there and get more of those. And um, lots of opportunity, guys. There's also a lot of potential bad. <clears throat> I think one of the coolest things about our industry as photographers is um, it really does. There's still the people out there that are going to want that personal touch. Um, there's still the people out there that are going to, that there's some things that just can't be replaced with um, AI. You know, um, can you take a picture of all your family members and put together a family picture when nobody actually came together? Yeah. Uh, what mom wants that? I'm sure there's some that want it. I'm sure there's some that want to add in a child that they've lost or different things like that. And that's totally understandable. And that's one of the cool things about the power of AI. But uh, will it replace us? Hopefully not. Um, but that's up to you to make the best of and to figure out how to make it work. So um, right on. I was just reading Tim's last comment. Okay, guys. Well, that's all I got for you today. Um, I, you know, honestly, it was more of, I just wanted to open your mind to it. Think about it. Um, there's a lot of negatives, a lot of positives out there to everything. Uh, find the positive in everything. Find a way to look at the positives in everything you do. Um, I'm terrified of what Okay, I can't say terrified. I'm scared of what is coming with AI. Uh, but I'm also, I'm more excited about the opportunities that are coming with AI and the potential for things uh, that are happening with AI. Maybe someday our world will become more, more play, less work, uh, and we can work more from... Um, the beach. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, but those are the things that'll be interesting to see. So that's all I got for you guys today. Any questions last minute Bueller? I'll give you guys a second. Uh, for those of you who participated, thank you, Nick and Tim. Um, I don't know who else hung out with us today, but thank you for being here with us. And, um, if you guys have any questions, thoughts about automation, um, hit me up because I'd love to uh, talk more about it. That's really uh, something that I am passionate about is automating things in our business, making it so that we can do things. Um, and uh, yeah. Okay. You guys have a wonderful week. I will see you next Monday, same place, same time at noon. I'll actually be here because I'll actually be able to talk better and maybe even here. And so we'll see you then. All right, guys. Have a wonderful day. Peace out, Girl Scout.